Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and module number five, Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. This is video number 20 and it's the penultimate video in this module and we're going to be looking at solubility product. We had a bit of a general discussion last time around some of the rules associated with solubility and how we can predict whether or not a precipitate will form when we mix different substances together. Now, we kind of had a bit of a general look at that, and I know that you probably watched that video and, and thought, well, the rules are okay, but they don't really tell me enough. And so we do actually need a little bit more detail if we're going to be uh, really successful in trying to analyze the levels of solubility and to determine whether or not precipitates will form. So what we want to do then is we want to try and get a sense of this idea of solubility and equilibrium. Now we know when a, when a salt is dissolved in water that a certain amount of that salt will just automatically uh, dissociate and move from the solid phase into the solution. But there will be a point that we reach where that solution becomes saturated. And at that saturation point, there's an equilibrium that's set up between the solid or the precipitate and the ions that are in solution. And that's the basis for what we're looking at here. So let's first of all have a look at an example of a precipitation reaction and then see if we can use our knowledge of equilibria to um, help us to take us one step further on. So you remember that the whole point about precipitation reactions is to separate the ions. So we've got barium nitrate, two nitrate ions, and we've got sodium, two sodiums, uh, sulfate, SO4, two minus. So again, here are our uh, ions that are present in these solutions. So then we mix them together. We want to have a look at the spectators. So again, we go back to our uh, rules. So we've got our NAG-SAG, LMS and Castro bar. So the N in the NAG-SAG is nitrates. And we know that all nitrates are soluble, so we can eliminate this one. Um, we also know that the G in, in NAG is the group one uh, metals of which sodium is one. And we've also hopefully remembered that all of those are soluble. So sodium and nitrate will remain in the solution. They don't form precipitates. What we also know is that all sulfates are soluble, but sulfates have two exceptions. The first are the LMS, the lead, mercury, silver, but the other is the Castro bar. And the bar is barium. So therefore barium sulfate will form a precipitate. So let's write the equation then. So now the equation is called the net ionic equation because what we're doing with this equation is we're bringing down barium ions in solution with sulfate ions in solution and they are forming barium sulfate precipitate or solid. So then we want to write the equilibrium expression. And you remember the equilibrium expression is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. OK, so in this situation, what we've got is the products in this case would be BaSO4. And we would divide that by Ba2 plus uh, multiplied by SO4 2 minus. Now, the one important thing when you're looking at this is that when you have a solid, the solid does not, well, I suppose we don't think of it as a concentration. In fact, we would think of it more as a density. And that is that a certain number of grams um, take up a certain uh, volume, a certain number of mils or liters. Um, this is our value for density. So if we have twice as much, we don't have, we haven't doubled the concentration. We just take up twice as much space. So in actual fact, this value here, as is the case for all precipitates, in the solid phase, um, solid is a uh, constant. Okay. Um, so effectively, we can remove that from our equation and simplify this down. So let's have a look and see how we do that. So if we were to um, create an expression for K, then 
the solid component actually comes out. So the way that the equilibrium was written in the previous example, so in this one it's going to be a little bit easier, uh, we have the products this time of the actual ions. Uh, Cl minus, raise a pair of two, don't forget that coefficient there, and the PbCl2 is here. This is a solid, uh, uh, this is a solid, therefore it's a constant. So if we multiply it, we get a constant times a constant, which is a constant. So we have another constant that's just a multiple of the uh, two ions, in this case, lead and chlorine. Now, in the previous example, we effectively had our equilibrium constant as being one over the two ions that were present in that example, barium and sulfate. But of course, um, if we were to multiply this across here and then bring this one back across here, then we're still going to end up with a constant. We're just going to have the inverse of a constant, which is still going to be a constant. So this is a special type of example of an equilibrium constant. In fact, this is called the um, solubility product. And if you remember that it's called the solubility product, then you'll remember that it actually has a value or at least a um, symbol K with the subscript SP for solubility product. And it relates to um, ionic salts dissolved in solution. Now we can use something mathematical. Now we can say that because we have a value that we can calculate, and this value that we calculate is based just on the concentration of the ions. As K is high, then we have a very soluble salt. If K is low, then we have an insoluble salt. And as for all values that we've looked at for K, K is also dependent on temperature. So if we were to look specifically at lead chloride, then we know that at room temperature, 25 degrees C, the solubility of lead chloride in water is only about 10 grams per litre, but this increases to 33 grams per litre if we expand, uh, sorry, if we increase the temperature up to 100 degrees. So Solubility product is another application of the equilibrium constant. It's too affected by temperature and it tells us how soluble a particular substance is in water. Thanks for watching.